Hello and welcome to another Java tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to continue the discussion on numerical integration. And uh, one of the interesting topics is Romberg integration, which I like to call uh, trapezoid integration on steroid. Because uh, what we are going to do is to use Richardson acceleration or extrapolation. Let's call this acceleration. Uh, to apply the Richardson acceleration to the trapezoid method so uh, if we choose n number of sub intervals for trapezoid uh, method then we end up with a partial sum and then we can apply a Richardson acceleration why because uh, as we discussed before the uh, typically the sequences that we have uh, for Richardson uh, for numerical integration they have a the error has a format of some number over n to some power and uh, because of this behavior uh, we can apply Richardson acceleration and uh, in our discussion on the Richardson transformation of sequences we said that Richardson of the first order eliminates the first leading term Richardson of the second order eliminates the first leading the first two leading terms of the errors and the third order eliminates the first three leading terms of the error and uh, Richardson of the fourth order eliminates the first four leading terms of the error and it becomes more and more accurate so what we are going to do in the topic of Romberg integration here we're going to write the trapezoid down with some specified number of sub intervals and then uh, apply for example a Richardson fourth order Richardson to the summation to the partial sum that is being produced by trapezoid and that should hugely accelerate the convergence and the accuracy with just a very small number of sub intervals okay so mostly in most cases Romberg integration is defined on the trapezoid method but in fact any method for a numerical integration generates a partial sum right and the integral the value of the integral is the limit of that partial sum or a series right and we can apply the Richardson acceleration to any of those methods like rectangle method trapezoid or symptom okay now I mean in general uh, Richardson extrapolation uh, generates an a, a recursive, recursive formula for n and m m is basically the leading order of the error and n is the number of sub intervals i believe and then because this is recursion we can use caching or memoization right and r n and n m is basically the zeroth term which is applying one sub interval to the original function Therefore, it's just the length of the interval b minus a times the average of the function values at both ends, f a plus f b over 2. This is a trapezoid formula for only one sub-interval. And uh, but again, uh, I don't recommend uh, doing recursions because we have already implemented very powerful uh, uh, tools for creating sequences, working with sequences, and applying transformation to sequences. All right. This uh, brief introduction is from uh, Wikipedia. So it says in numerical analysis, Romberg's method is used to estimate the definite integral by applying Richardson extrapolation repeatedly on the trapezoid rule or the rectangle rule. So it's not just specific for uh, trapezoid. It could be trapezoid rule or rectangle rule. And uh, the estimates generate a triangular array Romberg's method is a Newton Coates formula if you recall Newton Coates formula means it works on a uniform partitioning of the original interval so it evaluates the integrand at equally spaced points uniform partitioning the integrand must have continuous derivatives though fairly good results may be obtained if only a few derivatives exist if it is possible to evaluate the integrand at unequally spaced points non-uniform partitioning then other methods such as Gauss quadrature which we have already discussed Gauss Lojan quadrature and uh, Clenshaw Curtis quadrature are generally more accurate so if we don't if there is no reason to stick with uh, uniform partitioning it's better to use quadrature methods because they are generally more accurate 
but just in terms of Romberg integration, typically I don't, I mean, I don't recommend doing recursion or recursive implementation if there is a straight implementation, implementation is possible. So what we are going to do here, we're going to create a method Romberg in our integral 1D class, which takes an start n value and the number of sub intervals. And then what we are going to do first is creating a sequence, which is called trapezoid sequence. This is the partial sum for the trapezoid rule. So if you recall this trapezoid method in integral 1D just uh, sums up uh, adds n terms based on the number of sub intervals so if we have sub intervals it has n terms of the trapezoid and then what i'm going to create what i'm going to do is create a new sequence romberg sequence by taking the original trapezoid sequence and apply a fourth order richardson a fourth order richardson acceleration okay and then i'm going to return this and evaluate it at the number of sub intervals which is our n right we divide the original interval into some number of sub intervals and uh, as the number increases of course the error becomes smaller and smaller and then what I'm going to do I'm going to also apply that to for example Simpson and I'm going to plot the convergence as the function of uh, sub intervals all right so let's head to Eclipse and try to do that in the integral class in the integral project, I have integral 1D and uh, if you recall, we had uh, previously implemented the uh, forward rectangle, backward rectangle, center rectangle method, trapezoid, which takes uh, a start value, n value, and the number of terms or sub-intervals and it uses uniform partitioning, if you recall. Simpson, the same thing, start and number of sub-intervals, it uses uniform partitioning and then we had the gauss Legendre three points, gauss Legendre five points, and gauss Legendre that asks uh, for, a, for the number of quadrature points, or gauss Legendre that by default uh, uses a five point gauss Legendre but works with 100 sub intervals. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to create a method public double Romberg, double start, double end uh, and int num sub intervals all right and then uh, in order to use the sequence class in the sequence project sequence interface is an interface that we already have developed it's an in, uh, in a functional interface has only one public abstract method and the rest uh, which are all the transformations that defined we defined on the sequence are based on like default methods so they don't change the status of the sequence of the interface as a functional interface which is a great thing so what I'm going to do here I'm going to give a dependency on the sequence project so build path and in the projects I'm going to add a dependency on the sequence all right now I'm going to import the sequence uh, and call this trapezoid sick is uh, I just uh, say n goes to trapezoid method start and n this should be n all right and this argument let's just call it sub intervals now this takes trapezoid method takes an integer but here for the sequence uh, the parameter is a long so we just do a typecast to integer all right now i create a new sequence uh, let's call this romberg sequence and it's basically taking the trapezoid sequence and apply a richardson fourth order and then return uh, romberg sequence and evaluate it at sub intervals all right so sub intervals in integer is integer this takes a long so there is an implicit casting here which uh, Java the compiler automatically does that so the compiler automatically does uh, uh, implicit casting implicit casting because there is no loss of information when you go from int to long because long is a bigger 
number than integer it has 64 bits integer has 32 bits so there is no loss of information and java compiler automatically does the implicit casting for us all right so this is the rumberg so there is no recursion we're doing purely summation and sequence stuff and that's very completely straightforward now i can do for example apply romberg on uh, uh, forward rectangle forward rectangle and uh, pretty much everything remains the same uh, instead of a trapezoid sequence we have forward rectangle forward rect sequence and this goes to we call the forward forward rectangle method start and uh, n all right and again the number of sub intervals is n and we have to cast it to int because the sequence is based on long and then we calculate that we uh, apply a fourth order recharge zone and evaluate the number of sub intervals and again you see how beautiful this is and how simple this is using this concept of sequence interface and then all these transformations are already defined in the sequence interface as a default method so we're taking advantage of lambda expressions the power of lambda expressions and also the power of evolving an interface using default methods so adding more capability to the interface all right okay great so let's create a test class test romberg and uh, here in the i'm going to invoke test one and test one is going to uh, compare the convergence of uh, forward rectangle and the romberg forward rectangle which means we apply force order recharge on, on the forward rectangle method public static void uh, test one so let me just note it that uh, forward rectangle and romberg on forward rectangle just know that we could uh, uh, define any order of recharge zone as, uh, as any order of recharge zone transformation the first order second order third order fourth order on the on the original partial sum sequence here i'm basing the romberg integration on the fourth order recharge zone acceleration all right so maybe let's also write it down so fourth order recharge zone acceleration sometimes uh, sometimes higher order recharge zone accelerations cause instability but i believe in most of the cases for well behaved functions when we are doing numerical integration uh, the fourth order recharge zone uh, should be pretty stable so let's do this um, so what I'm going to do first, I'm going to obviously create an integral function 1d func t goes to t times t. So we're just doing t squared. And then an integral 1d object, integral integral new integral 1d, we pass in the function and then double result trap uh, result result forward rectangle is integral forward rectangle from 0 to let's say 5 and then uh, let's say 10 terms now we already know the exact right so let's uh, create an int method int is uh, num intervals let's call it 10 and then uh, from 0 to 5 so we already know the exact double exact is so the antiderivative is t cubed over 3 and from 0 to 5 is 5 times 5 times 5 over 3 all right so sys out exact plus uh, exact plus exact 
and then uh, uh, sysout forward rectangle equals uh, result forward rectangle and finally we're going to do Romberg so double result Romberg is uh, basically uh, integral Romberg on forward rectangle from 0 to 5 and 10 sub intervals and then sys out uh, Romberg and result Romberg and we're going to set this to num intervals so the exact value is 41.66666 the forward rectangle with 10 number of sub intervals gives us a very poor accuracy 35.625 but the, when we apply the fourth order Richardson acceleration on the forward rectangle we pretty much end up with a very good accuracy at least eight decimal places of accuracy three four five six seven actually ten decimal places of accuracy so this is unbelievable such a powerful Richardson acceleration such a very simple concept but extremely powerful so we, on, we are only using 10 sub intervals and we're getting per, like crazy accuracy so if I increase the size of the interval we know that a smaller sub intervals will result in a larger error so let's see uh okay so uh double start double end uh, 50 so let's just parameterize this a start and a start end Again, uh, uh, you probably can see that we're doing only 10 sub intervals. The exact value is uh, the exact value is end times end times end divided by three. Actually, let's write it at minus start times start times start divided by three. So the exact value is 41.666.6666, okay? The forward rectangle has a very poor accuracy with only 10 sub-intervals. The Romberg, basically fourth order Richardson acceleration on the forward rectangle, basically gives us the exact result. So three, six, seven, seven decimal places of accuracy, which is extremely good. And... Uh, so let's set this to 5 again and what I'm going to do I'm going to plot so let's try to plot the uh, so what I'm going uh, let's call okay in the let's create another method actually let's uh, let's go let's screen let's create another method test 2 and invoke test2 all right and in test2 what i'm going to do i'm going to vary the number of sub intervals and then uh, we don't care about okay we do care about exact because i'm going to plot the uh, i'm going to plot the error and then result forward result romberg and then uh, let's set and start and end and then we create an array of uh, double ind indices is uh, new double let's say uh, 100 or maybe 50 we're going to sum from one sub interval to 50 sub intervals and then uh, for int i equals 0 i less than indices dot length i plus plus 
we're going to say that indices uh, i is basically i plus one all right so the zeroth index is one sub interval etc and then we're going to create a new double which is uh, forward rect new double indices dot length and double romberg new double uh, indices dot length all right and then for int i equals zero i less than indices dot length i plus plus what we are going to do here number of sub intervals is i plus one and then uh, all right we do have this exact thing here so we're going to say that okay uh, forward rect i equals that and then uh, Romberg I equals that. All right, and then of course we create a MATLAB chart. MATLAB chart fig new MATLAB chart fig dot plot indices uh, forward rect and blue fig dot plot indices Romberg and red and then fig dot render plot fig dot marker on and fig dot uh, so what i want to do actually uh, we want i want to plot the error math dot abs integral this minus exact and the same thing here math dot abs integral minus exact so that's my plan fig dot uh, uh, log set x axis to set y axis to log and then fig dot show with a true flag all right so what i'm going to do here i'm going to run this and then uh, All right, let's uh, not do the log and it doesn't show because I'm on Mac so I have to go and uncheck this flag in the VM arguments all right so um, as you can see uh, the blue one is the error of the I mean it's fascinating that the Rombergs is basically the exact and it should be exact because we know that the um, for the polynomial uh, the polynomial only has one over uh, it, uh, t squared has only one over if we calculate the error it has only one over most likely from 1 over n error and 1 over n squared it doesn't have n cubed or n fourth all right and we know that a fourth order rom fourth order rect uh, richardson acceleration removes four leading terms and for t squared we only have at maximum two leading term error so the romberg even from the beginning it gives us the exact result and that's a very good thing so let me just add some labels here fig dot uh, x label number of sub intervals fig dot y label and uh, error so romberg okay error so so maybe uh, ts squared is not a good function maybe let's try something more interesting like sine all right so as you can see uh, 
So the blue one is the forward rectangular approximation. Uh, let's also increase the font. Fig that font size, let's say 15. So the blue one is the is the forward rectangular approximation based on the number of sub intervals. You see that the error is re relatively large, but then uh, uh, the Romberg, the basically fourth order Richardson, after four or five terms, it's just uh, uh, it's unbelievably fast converging to the result, right? So it's great. So uh, let's copy this, put this here. Okay. So the red one is going to be Richardson. Richardson on uh, forward rec. Okay. And the green one uh, and the blue one is going to be forward rec. Forward rectangle. Okay. Now let's try to use uh, Romberg uh, on the basically on the trapezoid. So clearly we're going to create a new test. Here we'll call it test 3 and we're going to do trapezoid. Trapezoid and Romberg on trapezoid, which is the original definition of Romberg. So we're going to have uh, refactor rename trapezoid and Romberg. Okay, we're going to call trapezoid method. And then we're going to call the original Romberg method. And let's run test three. All right, as you can see, trapezoid has a uh, basically faster convergence than. Uh, uh, then forward rectangle, so after 10 terms, it's pretty close. But again, the Romberg or the Richardson acceleration is much, much faster, right? After five terms, it's pretty much there. Whereas the, the original trapezoid is after like 20, 25 uh, iterations, it's getting there. So we are definitely accelerating the numerical integration by a lot. Okay? So here we have, uh, so the red one is still uh, Richardson. Richardson on trapezoid method. And then the blue one is just the original trapezoid method. Okay, and we can clearly see that uh, uh, using the Richardson acceleration can enhance uh, the, the rate of convergence by a lot. And that's a very good thing because uh, then uh, we don't need to divide the interval into many sub intervals. And uh, that helps a lot in terms of computation. Of course, we're paying some uh, computation penalty on doing the uh, basically the transformation because it involves a few multiplications divisions uh, basically just multiplication right and uh, we have to take four terms and then multiply them but at the end of the day the fact that uh, we are eliminate, eliminating the leading terms of the error for leading terms causes a huge improvement in terms of uh, uh, actually I was why is the error 
uh, my oh oh okay so <laughs> we made a mistake so the exact is actually uh, minus cos so it's the uh, is this cosine of uh, a start minus math dot cosine of end so I made this mistake also in test 2 we use sine so the exact because remember we were plotting the uh, absolute error so yeah now the error goes to 0 let's uh, plot it on the log scale test 3 okay so this is a much better way of uh, seeing it let's copy this this was for trapezoid, the absolute error. Okay. Uh, send it to back. So the blue curve here is the original trapezoid uh, estimation. And you see that after 50 terms, it only gives us two between uh, almost two decimal places of accuracy but then we apply fourth order Richardson and we end up with a huge number of uh, uh, decimal places of accuracy as I mentioned at the for fourth order Richardson we do get some instability in terms of some small oscillations happen but the error is pretty good after 35 terms we get about three four five six seven eight we get more than eight decimal places of accuracy and let's do the same thing with uh, test 2 which compares the forward rectangle and the Romberg on forward rectangle all right so let's run test 2 and again uh, you see the forward rectangle is painfully slow after 50 terms we don't even get one decimal place of accuracy but using fourth order Richardson acceleration we get a, we get more than one two three four five six seven eight more than eight decimal places of accuracy and we're not doing much we're just doing a very simple uh, sequence transformation you see I want you to really understand and observe the power of sequence transformation that's incredible and for numerical integration Richardson is the is the transformation to go with uh, all right so this red one is Richardson fourth order Richardson on the forward rectangle and uh, this uh, blue one is Is the Richard uh, is just a forward rectangle, which is painfully slow. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this um, uh, lecture on numerical integrations using sequence accelerators. Please stay tuned. I have more lectures uh, that will come soon, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.